that is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Kaya and today we are going to be doing a full album deep dive into Bolt Thrower's 1989 record Realm of Chaos Slaves to Darkness. I'm so excited about this record. Y'all have been telling me about Bolt Thrower for a long time, okay? A long time. And we're finally here. Shout out to the record label that is partnering me with, with me on this video, and that is Earache. Thank you so much for partnering with my channel um, and being a part of this journey with me. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about Bolt Thrower, per usual with these partnered videos. Um, all of the links <laughs> for the band and the record label will be down below in the description. Y'all, most of y'all already know about Bolt Thrower, but I still encourage you to check out their social media, any merch that they have, uh, more of their records. If you are looking to pick up like a CD or a cassette or something like that from Bolt Thrower, from Earache, go check out those links. I'm sure they've got some holiday sales coming out too in their distribution. Who knows? Who knows, you know? That's what I got. So we're doing a whole album. Get your snacks, get your popcorn. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. I post weekly videos documenting my metal journey as a brand new metal head. If that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post. You can also join my Discord, The Mosh Pit. There's an invite link in the description and my PO box is also down there if you feel inclined to send me something in the metal unboxing. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. pausing it just because I'm gonna have this go right into the first actual track eternal war just so y'all know okay but first impressions on this interlude it's it's definitely very like damp if that makes sense like it's make it's very visual for me like I feel like it's Mordor Lord of the Rings-esque hell the voice it's obviously deep end so it's like almost like satan or something and then there's like dripping cave noises and stuff very disorienting setting the stage i'm already liking it so again i'm going to play this and just have it go right into the first track eternal war Playback paused. God, really? Oh, 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 
such a strong start. Oh my lord. It's such a short song, so I didn't feel like pausing it, but if there was like a, a song... Now, I've never done cocaine, but I feel like this song is like taking a line of cocaine and then like... <laughs> I don't know. That's what I got, okay? The fall. Oh, she is like a punch in the face. She just keeps going and going and going. Really like it. I really like the groove. The two different like groove pockets, I guess, that they had in the end, especially when they kind of like dragged out. I think the guitar kind of dragged out right before it ended. And they kind of did like this little halftime thing just before that too. Just so punchy. Very, very fast. Delicious double bass. Got that nice like reverb recorded effect of like just the late 80s that was in late 80s metal which I really like. I also love that they it's it's just the perfect way to open up an album because you have this sort of like intro that's just like ambient noise with like kind of a spoken word Satan spoken word thing and then just smacking you in the face with this first song. It's short, it's sweet, it's punchy and that's just that's the whole point of it that perfect introduction because it's almost like eternal war with the intro is a full song in and itself and now we can actually get into the record so it's just like the first layer of butter or something on a sandwich <laughs> i liked it i really like it a lot um yeah they're kind of giving me heavy af it's kind of giving me um vocal wise morbid angel but obviously it's like cracked out so fast. At least for this song, it's really, really fast. Um, yeah, it's got that like late 80s sound, kind of, kind of reminding me of like early Sepultura, giving me a little bit of carcass, just a tad, but definitely more like Testament, Megadeth in terms of like era sound, if that makes sense. Full Thrower and Digby Pearson, huh? Digby Pearson, that's a nice name. It's so yellow. 12 songs, nothing on this song at all. Through man's existence, from the start of time, the fight for survival is our only crime. Goes right into verse 2. Those in power, rotten to the core. The ongoing battle, the eternal war. Oh, I like that. Oh, then we have a bridge. What are you fighting for? Is it worth dying for? You're held down by your chains. There's no one but you to blame. I love... Slave to hatred, peace they deplore, driven by despair, eternal war. I love that. Super nice lyrics, just straight to the point. Joe Bench. Let's just see. John Blanche is the art director. They recorded this in Wales. Dakota's playing with an old cat toy. I'm sorry. I've got to keep the puppy entertained, okay? Otherwise, things go haywire if she's not contained, okay? I wanted to look up this Digby Pearson person. It's a cool name. Okay, so Digby Pearson, yeah, because Eric um, sign, is signed with Morbid Angel. They had... Uh, Morbid Angel on there, so kind of makes sense that maybe they would use, record label would use kind of the same music producer. So it looks like they've got Digby worked with Morbid Angel. He's worked with Napalm Death. Carcass? Okay, nice. Makes sense because Carcass was also with Earache, with Bolt Thrower. Ta-da! Stop it. Alright, so mostly just Morbid Angel, Napalm Death, Carcass, and Bolt Thrower. Nice. Solid bands, Mr. Digby. Alright, now let's continue. We're going to track three, Through the Eye of Terror.
fire. Oh, both of these riffs, delicious. Juicy fire, and I love how they introduce this riff for like two measures, and they go, and then we get into this like even groovier pocket. Delicious. Oh, okay, let's continue. <laughs> this oh what I've noticed about this song so far there's two major riffs that are money especially in this this that sort of riff oh oh it's the driving force of this like verse section and I love that the second time that they're doing it they're layering it with I'm assuming they have a second guitarist that's just down just hitting these like solid notes just and letting them ring out almost like an added bass as the bass is like following the drums and creating this awesome rhythm you have the second guitar such as adding this like nice bass layer with his strings under this fat driving riff that just ah amplifies it so much and of course like you know adds a little bit of a change because the first time, I believe the first time they did, they didn't have that, like, guitar bass layer. Super nice. I really, really like this song. Okay, let's continue. Also, my dogs are playing. Hey! Get your butts out of here. You can play in the other room. Go! Go! I'm listening to Ball Thrower. Go! Oh, Lord. <laughs> Damn 
dogs. They're like toddlers. Get your butts out of here. Anyway. God, sorry. Okay. This song slaps nutsacks, okay? I'm here for it. I'm already liking it, okay? I love this song. I love that they pull back. They have two measures in the end where they pull back everything and just kind of let this rip just like do its thing. And I love the double bass outro. It's very subtle, but everything kind of like, it almost sounds like everything fades, but the double bass stays pretty solid. So it's like, it feels like this awesome fade. And I love the choruses, how it's just like super in your face, like thrash, speedy. <laughs> Um, yep, I'm here for it. Brutality. Yeah, definitely this is my favorite song so far. And I love also that they brought back the like Satan vocals that you hear in the intro just a little bit. It's very subtle. It's a dark, it's a lower melody like layering piece in that ending, but it's there. It's definitely there. So this is called Through the Eye of Terror. Humanity prevails through the eye of terror, a twisted reality mutilated eternally. Bars. Here now you shall stay, to grow in strength, return someday, to seek revenge on human prey, mutilated as your mind decays. Chaos God took your soul, your destiny they control. Warp your form with power untold. Watch as your life unfolds. Dude, the lyrics of this song are like so freaking poetic. Through the eye of terror, power of chaos wait. To bring mankind's destruction, they come to steal your fate. Is there like a story behind this album or is, is it like a... I don't think it's a concept album, but is there a story behind it? Realm of Chaos. I'm assuming it's like a some type of war. It seems like some. It's very. It's giving me Lord of the Rings. Like I mentioned with the intro, Mordor type thing. It kind of seems like it's that kind of like Mordor, Dark Hell, all those creatures, like on one side, and then these like I don't know a lighter, more good side, I guess you could say, that's fighting that, if that makes sense. Um, I need to rewatch Lord of the Rings, side note. <laughs> Alright, considered rock, death metal, metal, yeah, Google has them under as like, grindcore, and death grind, what are your thoughts on that? Definitely my favorite song so far on this record, bar none, just instrumentally those two riffs, oh, Money, 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 money. Money, money, money. Money. Okay, sorry. Let's go ahead and go into their, what is it? Fourth track, Dark Millennium. <laughs> great way to do that. Starts it off with this meaty, heavy riff. Soon as the lyrics come in, he drops out. So it's just like this drop. What a great layering piece just to have his vocals like ring out. And then he brings like the same, obviously same guitar tone, a variation of the riff, but it's just a little bit more simple. So it's like still giving you that the catchiness of that first riff you were hearing but it's just not the full thing until of course i'm guessing the chorus and stuff like that great way to just like layer a song and keep it punchy and build dynamic in a song as you're recording 
super important to have that. track all right loved the ending also with those like hard stops ba, ba, ugh. okay the riff the main riff that's like really really fast seems really difficult to play there were two sections in this song too where the timing based on the transitions felt a little messy but like it worked i don't know it personally it felt messy but they made it work but it's also, I think, because, like, the switch is so quick because it's so sudden. They're not really giving themselves space to kind of build up to it. Because, like, for example, the first one was the super double bass section. Like, they didn't give themselves any room. It was just, like, kind of like a regular sort of, like, thrash beat. And then immediately jump into this double bass section. And I guess for me personally, it sounded a little conjurable getting into it. But I liked it. I did like it, and I also really liked this, like, the the speed and the tempo of that main fast riff is just so different than the other, like, sassier, slower riff that he was doing, so when he does go into that faster riff, it's a little like, whoa, okay, now we're doing this, <laughs> but not in a bad way. This track slaps, okay? It slaps. <laughs> I really like it, and there was also another riff, too, where they, like, started it off just, like, the one lower section, and then they had the higher harmonies for the other three, which was deliciously, like, panned right over the top here. That's where I imagine it to be, and it was just perfect. Oh, yeah, such power, such heaviness. Yeah, both of them are serving, absolutely. Dark Millennium. Do, 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 do. <sighs> They're definitely, uh, I don't think there's going to be anything on any of these songs, and that's okay because I'm kind of just here for the listener's experience, but what they really are doing so well is having these is layering and production wise they're really good about layering their riffs and 
and and having it be like yes fast pace but not everything is like in your face like that first track after the intro um just super catchy riffs hard hitting just ugh, i like it a lot what are you doing you feel confusion and new torment as your mind decays devolution of your life begins today begins today hear the circus Sar circus scream in vain despair for your life hope is futile as missiles strike a cruel twist of the knife hope for future is what you say with your world in ruins what a price to pay There you go. You ever like, for you dog owners out there, you ever see your dog kind of like contemplating laying down and a part of you thinks that they might take a crap in your living room or something when they do it? And you're like, please just be laying down. Please don't do what you think I'm, what I think you're going to do. <laughs> just me? All right. <laughs> I just wanna see something here. So this, let's see, I wonder if there's nothing on here, An additional note, recording information, recorded in April, mixed in July, in Slaughterhouse Studio in England. Yeah, I want to see what their lineup is real quick. Oop, went a little far. Numbers. So I know that the band broke up. Okay. So it looks like they broke up in 2016. Is that what we're, we're working with here? Gavin Ward, bass. Looks like he was an original member. So it looks like they were all original members until 2016. Yeah, I guess you don't see that too often. I don't see that too often. Because we just did Suffocation, and uh, they had... They replaced a few members. I feel like most of these like metal bands replace a singer, drummer, bass player, stuff like that. As the years go, there's usually one band member who holds on that's like original. I always feel bad for them. <laughs> so it's interesting that all of, basically all of the, the uh, original people, so they had, okay, it looks like they might have had a few people that may have subbed past members. Maybe there was some extra People. Looks like they had another drummer between 86 and 94. But I'm assuming that Gavin Ward, Barry Thompson, Joe Bench, and Carl Willits were original members. Um, and then, you know, if, if they needed a sub, I would assume that they would pull from this. Because they were also, I mean, like, for example, Andrew Whale drums from 86 to 94. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just a sub. All right. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. Okay, let's go to the next song, All That Remains.
right here is fat nasty. Oh my god. Another fireball track of just nothing but punchy, slappy riffs and delicious double bass. Also, it's just like the beginning of this whole song is just like fire. It's in the pocket. <laughs> it's like this delicious halftime and I'm so here for it. Definitely this solidifies like my opinion that Bolt Thrower is a combination of Carcass meets Morbid Angel but like a little faster. That's kind of what I'm getting. Definitely vocals is very... Yeah, it's both. It's both. Carcass and, and Morbid Angel, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, okay, let's continue. It's like every single song is so catchy, riff heavy. Oh, and each riff is like ridiculously sassy too. Oh my god, I really liked the ending with this like. They could have just left it to where the guitarist could have just like soloed and done his little wah, 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 thing, but I like that they had it as a layering piece where he was just like underneath his verse and then he was able to fill space. And they panned it a little bit lower in the ball and the headphones over here on just this side. Really nice way to do that. Um, fire. Fire Dope Nasty. And uh, they kind of played around with like tempo, just like in a layering sense. Because they had a couple stops. Previously, before I think this like second chorus, where the guitar would like do a, I guess, strum or something like that, and then the drums would follow almost like a half beat later. It seemed like it was just a little late. I don't know if that was like on purpose or whatnot. It seemed, in my opinion, that it was a little late, but just a little bit. 
Um, and I liked it. It was kind of an interesting layering piece. Um, all that remains. There's probably going to be nothing on this one either, but y'all have to let me know what you think of this album. What is your favorite song on this record? What's your least favorite? What do you think? Okay, so they had Andy Whale on this one. Hold on. So that's interesting. Andy Whale, I'm assuming Andrew Whale is who it would have to be. So I'm going to have to look at these members as we continue doing this. I am assuming that these past members, because they are all from the beginning era of just before this record, I know they have a first record that was released in 88, and then this is kind of like their first, their second album. Uh, so Andy Whale, Andrew Whale, uh, he's a real founding member though, but so is this other dude. Oh, these are two bass players. Bass and guitar. So, oh, hold on. This is always so fascinating to me. Line up. So they had Andy on this one, two guitars, vocals, and a bass. Okay, so Andrew was on this one. Okay, so they just had... Oh, I see what it was I was looking at. So they just had a guitarist that, I wonder if Gavin Ward started off as their bass player or maybe just did like, you know, also obviously plays bass. So I wonder if he had a few bass riffs that he like wrote or helped. Joe Bench, the other bass player, the actual bass player, I'm assuming, uh, right? And then in the studio, you know, he mostly did probably rhythm guitar, I would assume. And then he probably helped lay down some tracks for bass, too. Interesting. On Metal Archives, there's no drummer put as members. Um, but in the complete lineup section, they have Andrew Whale, who I'm assuming, he was there until 94... And then they were placed, they had some vocals. Okay, it looks like after 94, they had Martin for a few years. Then he came back. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2015. And then they replaced him again. Oh, no, then they had Alex Thomas for the two years that Martin wasn't there. Okay, so then they lost... Martin as their new drummer after Andrew and that was in 2015 when Martin died and then Bull Thrower broke up in 2016 officially based on all the years of them being present in the band. Interesting. I wonder what is the reason why they broke up? I can also look it up but what's the reason? I'm assuming it's not just because Martin died. Um, but let me know. Okay, next song, Lost Souls Domain. Let's go.
great example of a sassy riff. No, 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 no. Just like, oh, it's like the perfect hook. That's what they're really, really good at is having these like delicious hooks. Super riff heavy, super in the pocket, in and to it, loved to the like reverb layered growl introducing you to the song. Fire. Loves that vocal, la da da way, and then he pans it, echoes, pans, and then it comes back to center. Great way to layer. Also, this like doing mat on top of like this kind of half timey slam, <laughs> just like a little breakdown thing. Money. They're really good, like I said of like layering these things and just creating a lot of like nice changes, dynamics within these songs so it doesn't ever get boring. I think the only one that doesn't have really any change is Eternal War. That's the only one that's just like straight noise basically in comparison to everything else that we've heard. But also it's purposely done as a layering piece in combination with the intro to get you started. So it makes sense that they would do that. And then of course all of the other like nicer, more whole songs that have these transitions fill the rest of the album. <laughs> I'm officially overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by how much I like this album. <laughs> I just want to keep hearing more of it so I can like really study all of their transitions and all of their riffs because they're I'm just you know it's the first listen so I just keep getting hit with all of these like really catchy riffs and catchy parts so it's all just kind of blending into one but I loved the layered vocals, like, 
I don't know, it's just like this really nice layered part in the chorus where he has like, he's doubling it and it's pocketing so nicely in the headphones right now. Whoo, loved it and also love the ending of this. How did it go again? What was it? Love that it like climbs down that riff. So he sets the stage, and then he climbs all the way down. He finally gets it to you, gives it to you until it ends. Loved it. Loved it. Y'all already know my thoughts about the riffs. I mean, they're ball throwers delivering in that department. It's, it's in the pocket. It's sassy, layered nicely. Um, let's go right into Plague Bearer. like such a swing and then at the end he goes -da, and just like this little sassy thing and because he has to do it so quick it's just like this little like fart in the wind noise <laughs> like it's underneath this riff but I like it it seems like it would be kind of hard to do and then like you have to go -da, 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 like right into it super fire I feel like bolt thrower would have been so fun to see live because this is like mosh pit full on mosh pit oh, okay let's continue <laughs> perfect layering another example of perfect layering because you forget that this riff is so sassy just before this double bass section it's so just sassy it's got groove but before that it's obviously he's not doing that it's his fast paced thing so when they finally do get to that sassier riff it just like it's juicy obviously by my facial expression it was juicy and I love that they give that to you for like four measures and then they layer the double bass on it and it's just like in the pocket. It's there. Juicy. Love it. Ah! They're so good at layering their songs and making their whiffs just like hit you. <laughs>
I loved the like stick. I loved that little section because it's like you can hear it pan all the way here. But he's doing that because the section is obviously like that fast in a click. And when they have the headphones on, they're hearing that click. Like, and as obviously as a drummer, metal drummer especially, you've got to be able to hear the click and have it be like and be on time. So I'm sure that they were like maybe having trouble. I mean, obviously he would have that sound like in the click. Jeez, my hair. They would obviously have the click in the headphones that was going that fast, but he was, you know, probably the rest of the band was having trouble either not hitting it directly on time or whatever. But he was like, okay, I'm going to count it out just to make sure that like I am on it so that we're all on it when we get to this section. But also it's like a nice layering piece for the actual record. Here we go. So this is an unreviewed thing. Track number seven of Boltoro's Warhammer 40,000 inspired, Warhammer 40,000 inspired album Plague Bearer deals with the fictional traitor legion known as the Death Guard and the Plague Marines. The Death Guard led by their Primarch Mortarion are known to be the most resilient and devastating of all the Chaos Space Marine legions. This is some nerdy stuff. As they employ the use of chemical warfare, which most of the times ends up with planets they invade deemed completely lost due to the severe toxicity and contamination caused by the many diseases and weapons they use in battle. Oh, that's dope. Oh, I'm so into this. That's a great little piece of art. Damon Prince Mortarion and his Death Guard attacking a planet. Oh, I'm all into, like, nerdy space stuff like this. I call it nerdy, but in actuality, it's dope nasty. <laughs> I love sci-fi stuff. Let's see. Warhammer 40,000? What is this? Whoa. Okay, now we're on a totally different site. What is this? In the Grim... I don't care about your cookies. Okay? Why? Uh, reject your damn cookies. I don't care. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only one war. The Dark Millennium. Oh. Oh. Ah! Oh. Wait. We just listened to that song, didn't we? That was the... Oh! Well, that was track four. Welcome to Warhammer 40,000, the thrilling hobby of tabletop wargaming. Is this whole album about this game? The game is set in the grim darkness of the far future where mighty armies clash on countless war-torn worlds and humanity stands alone, beset on all sides by the threats of the heretic, the mutant, and the alien. There is no mercy, there is no respite. Prepare yourselves for battle. Whoa! You could have picked a better time to get started. Being a Warhammer hobbyist opens up a whole world of activities and community. Everything from building and painting collections of stunning miniatures. So you collect, build, paint, play, read. Whoa! Oh wow, we are into some nerdy nerd nerd. This is like a whole different realm. Learn how to play. Free core rules. Is this like a... Okay, so I'm assuming they have a video game. And then is it also a... A tabletop game? It, so it's like Dungeons and Dragons. But then also a video game. Whoa! It's like Dungeons and Dragons meets like World of Warcraft. Oh my gosh. Yep, I'm already down. I'm already here for it. There is a... Damn it. I almost had it. Okay, I'm here for it. I'm so down. I knew that there was like some sort of like war. There's some like sci-fi war or something like that. So this is more like 
galactic, like, it's kind of Guardians of the Galaxy-esque, if you can say that. Okay, I'm assuming they played this game. That makes me like them more. <laughs> Let's get into the eighth track, World Eater. I love this guitar tone. Somebody else in this, the first comment, yeah, one person said this tone is better than the 94 tone by far, bro. I really like the guitar tone of this. Again, the, the, the riff is fire. I understand this now more that this is like, now that it's like based off of this game. Oh. It makes it sound so dope. If you play Warhammer 40,000, do you listen to Bolt Thrower at all while you play? Because I feel like I would do that. <laughs> layered riff, the ba -na, ba -na, ba -na, ba -na, the lower half, and then they have the harmony on top of it. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but that, oh, I love it. Okay, let's continue. Sorry, I paused it. <laughs> Oh. Oh. 
loved that so much. Coming out of that section. And it's just the chugginess. Holds it out for a little bit. And then goes brings back that delicious riff. Fire, this is one of the catchiest riffs. It's so simple and it's designed, but it's just with the double bass and everything else around it, it punches so hard. And it's like, I love the chunkiness of it in the beginning and then the sass of the riff in the end. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> We're fading. This is the first song that they've had a fade, so they just kind of leave it. They just leave it to jam, huh? They just leave it to jam. There are notes on this one, lyric-wise. What do people say? The kind of tune to leave homes in ruins. No one dislikes this one. Dude, that one is just bolt thrower, you know? It's it's thrash giving time it's november all the leaves have fallen we're preparing for winter and this is perfect this is like perfect winter just music oh loudy loud what is this the enemy is now approaching with bloodlust in their eyes intense fears overcoming for now death you will defy this is an unreviewed annotation but it says the world eaters are known for their incapacity to feel anything but rage and anger. And from this, their lust for blood as corn does not care for where the blood flows. And to fight a berserker in close combat is a dice roll with rolled dices. I'm assuming those are all characters of this Warhammer 40,000 game. I'm going to have to do more research because I have never heard of that before and it sounds so fun. The XVI Legion uses a lot of chain weaponry, in particular chain axes. Ooh, this is like some Game of Thrones stuff. Okay, here's another thing. Whoa. Yeah. World Eater deals with the fictional traitor legion of the same name, World Eaters. World Eaters, led by their Primarch and Gron, are known to be the most aggressive and bloodlusted units of all the Chaos Space Marine Legions. I think that's, a, that's what that dude just said. This song also starts a trend that would be continued in four more songs throughout Bolt Thrower's career, which is the fade in and out continuation of certain songs. Oh, does that mean they're all connected? The songs being World Eater, Cenotaph, Embers, Powder Burns, and The Kill Chain, all in different albums. Okay, here's the sitch. Let me know in the comments. Do these songs go together? The fade in and out ones of their, their records, do they go on? together because if they do okay we're gonna we're gonna need to do a video of that i'm just telling you that right now if that is the case if that is the situation we're gonna need to do a video of that asap <laughs> okay a bolt thrower's got me sold dude you got concept record s you got delicious riffs, you got bass, you got just everything that you could possibly want with a death metal group from the 80s. Sorry, I'm stretchy. Ooh. Ow. Ow. Dude, nothing beats a good stretch. Nothing beats the first stretch when you first wake up and you hear your whole body just like crack and contort and then you come, you come back and you're like, I feel so much better. <laughs> Just me? Okay. Great. Next one. 
Drowned in Torment. We're coming to the end here. Let's see what they are doing with these last few songs. same riff? No, it's not. It sounds very familiar though to one of the previous songs that we heard, but it's just, it just seems a little more, not minor, but just different, I think. Also, it's layered in a way that, ugh, it's just dirty. <laughs> two measures right before this outro part, which I know the song is going to end and I just realized that, but right before this outro part, it's like that main riff is like stuck in your head. So you like, your head is just continuing to hear it over that two measure break part. And it's almost like he's doing just such a simple, very simple, just a couple notes of that riff, but super simplified. To fill that space it's just kind of interesting how the brain and the ears work that riff is nasty the pace of that too was like so funky it wasn't like a straightforward like beat either it was almost like they were cutting it they were cutting it a little bit like a seven eight beat or something like that <laughs> Let's quickly see if there's anything on this. I freaking, I just, ah, oh God. 
There's just so much that's going on on this record, and I'm very happy. <laughs> Mr. Digby, you're doing a good job as a producer on this record. A very good job. Nothing on this. How is it that Warhammer 4000 was, 40,000 wasn't like a note anywhere on this? Crazy. Drowned in Torment. Your will shall break you. The scars of war remains to haunt you. Feel the cold hands of death grasping you. Interesting. I'm so interested in this game. Oh, they have so many. There's an app. This is just dope. All kinds of dope. Dope, dope, dope. Dope, nasty Mr. Dopeness. Okay, let's continue. Realm of Chaos. This one's a short one. <laughs> section is just so nice it's so nice so in the pocket because you're all fast 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 and then it's just like this nice sort of breakdown just groovy in the pocket oh i'm here for it or even just once and then just like just like such a fast way to end it I also realized this was the title track like as soon as we started so definitely in the pocket no comments on this one but there is a note on genius it says it's unreviewed but it says this track deals with a fictional alternate dimension on the Warhammer 40,000 universe where the chaos gods and their daemons, demons, live. Whoa, look at this map. Oh, chaos gods. Okay, take me to this. This is another thing. 
Dude, this is so up my alley. This is like total Dungeons and Dragons. Chaos Gods, also called the Dark Gods. Or the Renu Ruinous Powers are powerful self-aware entities comprised solely of psychic energy who inhabit and control the psychic dimension that underlies all physical reality known as the immaterium or the warp dude this whole album is like way more than just freaking death metal this is like freaking cool so this is the map that's on there map of the realm of chaos note the positions and distances between the places on this map are only allegorical distance and time have no meanings in the immaterium whoa Dude. Oh. It's like galaxy. Oh, look at this thing. Oh, look at that skull. I know it's really small on the screen. I can put this link, I can link it down below if you want to like look at this more in depth too. Cause like, dude, this is like a whole different part of the video. I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but this is sick and nasty. I'm so into this. Oh, yeah, okay, great. So we have two songs left, technically. We have the final song, which is Prophet of Hatred, and then we have the outro. So I'm just gonna play both of those, let them come together, and then we'll do our final thoughts, okay? Let's go to the last song and the outro, Prophet of Hatred. Hatred. of this riff too I love that they had these like little stops and then the double bass was layered over it and then they have this pull everything out do this riff and then they have almost like a deeper harmony to that riff kind of like to sweep in right underneath it before they get into the second verse masters of layering I've already mentioned it Your 
right now we're going into the outro. Okay, we're back in the cave. because I just had to swap my SD card, which means I realized it wasn't freaking plugged in. Oh my lord, I'm so sorry. That is literally something I have like tried to ingrain into my brain to fix. Ah, uh, The checklist. The checklist. Okay, now we're recording. All right. Good Lord. Welcome back to better audio. <laughs> it is like turned on and everything, right? We're okay. Great. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Sorry, Lord. Okay. <sighs> At least we saw it now. So they just have a very short outro, just straight ambient, like cave noise. Um, interesting. I liked the spoken word in the intro. I feel like I wanted more spoken word in the outro too. Cause I feel like just having like ambient noise in the end, I think it's okay. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's only, it's an outro. It's only a minute long. So it doesn't really matter that it's there, but I feel like to really close out the album, I would have wanted like some spoken word or something like that. Um, Prophet of Hatred, let's see if there's anything on this song, so nothing on this one, and the outro is just cave noise, but well, let's see, yeah, no, cool, cool, cool. Really liked it. I want to just quickly take a glance at what uh, Wikipedia has to say about them. Let's see. English death metal band from Coventry formed in 86. I know they had a couple, several EPs based on, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like they had one, two, three, four, five demos, and then an EP, the Peel Sessions in uh, 88, then a full length album also in 88, and then a, another full length in 89, which is what we just listened to. So they were on Earache, one of the best selling bands on there. Succession of members toured Europe, United States and Australia. They had a 30 year career and released three, eight studio albums, three EPs, a live album. On the September 14th, 2016, the band announced that they were breaking up following the death of drummer Martin Kearns exactly a year later. So yeah, it is. it was because of that, I'm assuming. Um, Martin Kearns, so this was their second drummer. He joined the band at 17 after playing in several local bands in Coventry. 
playing anything from metal to reggae, having been playing pub gigs since the age of 14. That's dope. Kern subsequently left due to personal reasons in 98. He then returned in 2000. Yeah, because they had a sub drummer for two years. He was the longest standing drummer for Bolt Thrower. Um, let's see. Sorry, Kaya, I'm blown. I'm Kearns died unexpectedly at the age of 38? Wow, he was so young! On September 14th in 2015, the band posted on Sputnik Music that Kearns reported having breathing troubles and lightheadedness during a practice session and after trying to relax with a shower and a nap, was found to have died peacefully in his sleep from a heart attack. The following year, the remaining members of Bolt Thrower eventually decided to dissolve the band rather than replace Kearns, with frontman Carl Willett stating, I can confirm that Bolt Thrower are definitely over for good. There will be no reunion tours, etc. No compromise. Oh. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard when you lose a core member of your band because it's like I mean especially since 17 I mean they're like slayer in terms of how young they started and especially back then in those in those times of like the 80s you didn't have the internet obviously and then if you're in these like smaller like European little towns and stuff as kids you all just get to know each other and you're just like a family so I understand that you have some bands that are okay with replacing members and then you have others where it's like, yeah, no, we can't do that. Damn. Started so young too. Heart, I had a heart attack at 38. Jeez. So young. Yeah, Wikipedia has them as death metal, death doom, and grindcore, early grindcore. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think, do you agree with that? Let's see. Was a grindcore band in 86, influenced by Slayer, Crass, Discharge. Let's see. Founded by Gavin Ward, Barry Thompson. In a Coventry pub toilet during a hardcore punk gig. That's my kind of boys. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, Andrew Whale and Alan West joined on drums and vocals, respectively. Wow. Gavin had switched to guitars. So he, so Gavin started as a bass player. Okay, that's what I thought. That also happens too, is where you'll have like somebody start off on bass. It's usually bass and going into guitar or vice versa. Um, so it's kind of, it's funny that <laughs> Gavin switched to guitars and they recruited Alex Tweedy to play the bass. Alex did not show up for the recording, so Gavin played both guitar and bass for the demo. Two weeks after that recording session, Gavin's girlfriend, Joe Bench. Joe is a girl? I don't care about your donations, Wikipedia. Wow! They have a girl bassist? Oh, that's hot. Girl bassists. Mm. Protect them at all costs. I have an old Kent bass, but the like neck is a little bit warped. I inherited it from my granddad and I still need to get it like fixed, but I've always wanted to learn bass. Oh my gosh. So is she like... Wait, so that was his girlfriend? Are they still dating or married or something? Or did they just like, are they still dating? What's the titch? Maybe they broke up and they just like. At the time she was Ward's long-term girlfriend and notable as one of a few female members in a commercially successful death metal band. Oh my gosh. 
I bet you they still dated or they just like were like, yeah, well, we're not going to be like dating, but we can still be in a band together. I had no idea that Joe Bench was a girl. Oh, that's so dope. Dude. Okay, here's a, here's what it is about. The artwork for their second album was created by John Civic under contract for Games War Workshop for the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook released in 87 after Games Workshop heard the recording of the songs for Bolt Thrower's second Peel session which was recorded on the November 6, 1988, they offered to supply the artwork for Bolt Thrower's album and offer the band quickly accepted. Well, yeah, I would accept that too. Are you kidding me? That's dope. The record was released in 89. After the 1988 book of the same name published by Games Workshop. Dope. I wonder if they did like some sort of like collaboration release where it's like you could get the bull thrower Realm of Chaos Slaves to Darkness CD with the book Realm of Chaos by Games Workshop. That would be dope. Dude, if they had that, can you imagine receiving that for Christmas and you're like 15 getting into double, like death metal? Oh, I bet your daddy wasn't happy about that one, depending on where, where you're from. But the mom is like, he's just really into, he's eccentric. <laughs> Lord, this is dope. I'm so excited about it. Okay, final thoughts. Let's end the video. Let's do what we got to do. So, Bolt Thrower, I love it. I'm so here for it. Definitely, I get Carcass and Morbid Angel for vocals and the technicality of it. It's obviously not as technical as Carcass. Um, I feel like instrumentally, it's a lot like Testament. Um, in terms of like complexity and stuff like that, just really more focused. It's like simpler, but what they lack in like technicality, they make up for in just delicious, hard hitting riffs and, and production and the layout of the songs. It's just, it's really catchy. It's in the pocket and they're really good about layering their songs. So it's just one great dynamic adventure. And I love that this whole album is kind of a concept album, but not a concept album on like this game <laughs> that is just like, I've never heard of it before, but now I totally want to like do more research on it. I freaking love it. Um, it's just very unique. I love the intro. I love the outro. I do wish they had a little bit more in the outro just personally. Like I think it would have come together if they had, um, or at least if they didn't fade out the outro because y'all, if you've been watching me for a long time, you know, I love to listen to records front to back, especially on CD. So I feel like if they didn't fade out that last song, they could have just kept it going. And then that way, for people that do listen to it from front to back, it can just go right into the intro and the whole experience starts again with the spoken word, you know? Um, and maybe they just like have the ambient sound continue until maybe it stops, obviously for the track to end, you know? Something like that. But that is just a personal thing for me. You probably disagree. Um, but either way, I love, love this record. I think it's fun. I think the concept is really cool. The lyrics are really good. I love that they have a woman as a base, bassist in this, this fire. I love that um, it, it seems like they're just like one of those, like they're a family. They're like Slayer in that, in the terms of like just how young they started. That's so inspiring to me. I love reading about like the history of these bands especially when they start young, because I mean, back then in the eighties, it was hard to get, <laughs> it was hard to get your, your, uh, your name out there, you know, and it's just really cool to see that. So 
definitely super into bolt thrower let me know um about those i think it was like four songs that fade in and fade out and i think they all intertwine so let me know if those songs do intertwine do you want me to do a listen through of all those songs in a row together because i would be willing to do that because that sounds fire dope nasty okay so anyway that's gonna do it for my reaction on bolt throwers 1989 record reign of chaos realm of chaos realm of chaos slaves to darkness i was close <laughs> anyway that's my reaction i hope that you enjoyed it thank you so much for spending time with me today thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it and thank you so much to earache for partnering with me on this video like i said at the beginning if you want to look more at their um their music their merch social media stuff like that check out more of earache's discography check out more bolt throwers discography y'all are already familiar with it i would assume Either way, go and show some love and support to Earache and Bolt Thrower as they are our partners for this video. Super, super exciting. Um, yeah, that's, that's the video. So I hope that wherever you are and whenever you're watching this, you're taking care and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.